HKL2000 and HKL3000 have a new, sleeker way of displaying your diffraction data because HKL is now distributed with XDisp QT, the new version of the program that displays and interacts with diffraction images. This new version may not be the default version in your setup. To work with the new version, in the main menu, select Options, XDisp, XDisp QT. You can switch back and forth between the new and old versions of XDisp as you like. To ensure you work with the new version every time, select Options, Save Options, while XDisp QT is selected. Many of the new features will be intuitive for those familiar with the old version of XDisp. As before, you can launch the new version of XDisp using either the Display button in the Data tab or the Display or Peak Search button in the Index tab. If you use the Peak Search button, XDisp will open and peaks will be picked with the default settings, which are often sufficient. The automatic peak search button will pick peaks from several frames, using the number of frames set in the 3D window option. XDisp QT will pick peaks from all of the frames before displaying the image, so expect a slight lag if you set the 3D window high. The new XDisp has many improvements. Notably, zooming is now controlled by the mouse wheel, and will zoom the image using the mouse pointer as the center of the zoom. Push the wheel forward to zoom in. To scroll around the image, click and drag the image with the left mouse button, or drag the zoom box around on the image thumbnail on the top right. The window can also be resized using standard window manipulation methods. I prefer to use the Alt, Middle Click, and Drag method, which currently only works on Linux installations. For this, your mouse needs to be inside the window somewhere near a corner, and I find this much easier than either clicking and dragging the exact edge or right-clicking in the window's top panel and selecting Resize. Zoom in far enough and a numeric intensity value for each pixel will be displayed. Click and drag with the right mouse button to show a crosshair and intensity distribution for the vertical and horizontal lines displayed on the respective axis. The frame up and down arrows are on the top right. Change the intensity maximum and minimum using the intensity histogram on the bottom right. Click and drag the shaded box to change the range of intensities. Or drag an edge when it turns yellow to change just the maximum or minimum intensity. If your screen update is too slow, turn off the automatic refresh button. The minimum and maximum intensities for the image are displayed on the right side of the display. The cursor position, intensity at the cursor, and the resolution at the cursor are also displayed when the cursor is in the main window. To perform a manual peak search, use the peak search button in the top left. The buttons More Peaks, Fewer Peaks, Bigger Peaks, and Smaller Peaks work as before, and now have a pop-up description if you hover over the buttons. Use the Frame Up button to increase the number of frames that will be included in the peak search. If you want to manually change the peaks that are picked, use the Plus and Minus buttons to add or remove peaks. With the Plus button, click on a reflection to add it to the peak list. With the Minus button, you can either remove reflections one at a time or use the Selection button and click twice to define a rectangle of reflections that will be removed. You also have the option of removing all the peaks so you can start over or by coloring the peaks by their intensity over sigma levels. Reset, Cancel, and Finish buttons are located at the bottom left. When performing a manual peak search, it is important to click the Finish button to save the peaks to a file so they can be used for indexing. XDisp QT also allows you to change the beam position using the Set Beam Position button. You can either drag the beam center to a new position or click where you want the beam center to be. This is especially useful if you have collected data at a beam line where the beam center is visible through the beam stop. XDiskQt also has a built-in function to find the beam center that can sometimes determine the beam position automatically. This algorithm relies on the distribution of background scatter or ice rings and doesn't always work. If you are really having trouble locating the beam center, Perform a peak search and then use the Find Beam Position button in the Index tab of the main HKL window, which is shown here speeded up. This function will try to find the beam center 
by trying to index the image using different values for the beam center. When it has finished rastering around, the hottest pixel will automatically be selected. Or you can select a pixel, then click Use Current. You can optionally update the site. The Edit Mask button provides an easy and intuitive way to define the beam stop or flag regions where a shadow appears on the image. To use this feature, click on a polygon and the corners appear as circles that can be dragged to fit the beam stop shadow. Circular regions have a single control circle on the edge that changes the diameter. The shapes can be moved by clicking inside the shape and dragging it to a new location. More than one mask can be created. To delete a mask, select it and then remove it. Click Finish when you're done. The Export PNG button is provided to give you an easy means of exporting your image into a lossless format. Simply select the directory and file name and click Save. The remaining features of XDisp QT require that you have indexed your data. See the HKL Research Indexing and Scaling video tutorial for details on how this is done. Briefly, I select the Index button, refine the basic parameters while in P1, use Fit All to refine all parameters, then revisit the Bravi lattice. Returning to XDisp QT, you can toggle the predicted reflections on and off using the Predictions button. The arrow next to the button is a drop-down list that controls which reflections are displayed. The default is to show reflections that meet the sigma cutoff level you have set for refinement. By selecting all peaks, you can see how many predicted reflections do not meet this cutoff. You can also display the peaks found during the peak search again. Integration boxes is also a toggle that will turn on and off the boxes that show the peak and box size. These can only be seen if you are zoomed in close enough. Pixels inside the inner circle are recorded as the peak. Pixels between the two circles are the guard region and are not used. Pixels between the box edge and the outer circle are used to calculate the background for the reflection. XDisp QT has two ways of coloring the inner circle, which can be selected using the integration boxes 1 and 2 options using the Select drop-down associated with this toggle. Selecting the Difference Vector option will show difference vectors between the peak maxima and the center of the predicted reflection. The Profile Fitting Radius button can be used to show the size of the area that is used to calculate the expected profile for each reflection. The Beam Position button toggles the beam position crosshairs on and off. The Resolution Circles button is used to toggle the circles that show various resolutions. These circles are initially displayed from the main HKL window where you can choose the resolutions you want to display. If you have any questions or comments, please contact HKL Research at support at hkl-xray.com.